Welcome to making a Stuart model steam plant part 91. Making the gas pipe fittings by machining some brass hexagon bar to fit the gas jet pipe and the gas canister adapter. For all intents and purposes both of these components are identical except for the threads. This clip shows the gas canister adapter and this is threaded quarter by 32 threads per inch. And also it doesn't have a coned union fitting, it's a special fitting for an o-ring. This clip shows the gas canister adapter and the piece of brass hexagon bar that I'm going to use to make the pipe connector. This clip shows the fitting for the gas jet pipe, with another hexagon bar to make the pipe fitting for this end. Here are the taps that I'm going to be using to cut the threads, quarter by 40 and quarter by 32. More about this later. I'm in the small workshop built onto my kitchen and I'm using a Warco WM180 lathe. The job starts by turning down the hexagon bar to quarter of an inch. The piece of rubber piping that I will eventually be using has an inside diameter of M6, so this should be quite a good fit on the part that I'm making, which will be quarter of an inch in diameter, slightly larger. I'm reducing the diameter of this hexagon bar for a length of one and a half inches to fit inside the piece of flexible tubing that I'm going to use. I've set the micrometer to just over a quarter of an inch. And what I'm doing here is taking a sequence of test cuts until I get somewhere near. The end part is just under a quarter of an inch, so I adjusted the slide and now I'm going to take a full length cut which should give me the finished diameter. The piece of brass hexagon is sticking out a long way from the chuck. This is for the purpose of the video. It's easier to video it when there's some space to get the camera in. A final test with the micrometer tells me that everything's fine. I would rather this piece of brass be oversized than undersized for its application. Now I need to round the end so it fits in the pipe without damaging it. I'm doing this completely freehand by moving the saddle and turning the top slide at different rates. Once I've finished turning the end of the piece of bar, I finished it off with a file and some wet to dry sandpaper. This gave a very good finish. You may notice that the lathe is physically moving as I work on it. That's because it's sat on a workbench on foam pads. These pads are very dense and they are actually kneeling pads for gardening, but I find them very good for mounting lathes on a workbench. You don't have to bolt the lathe down. Here I'm taking the final cut to quarter of an inch. And to prove that it's quarter of an inch, here's the micrometer in place. I could let go of it and it would stay there. The next part of the operation is to machine a couple of grooves in the piece of brass where the pipe goes. Here I'm using a parting tool which is sticking out far too much. And to compound the problem, the piece of hexagon bar itself is still sticking too far out of the chuck. And while I'm at it, I must mention that the speed is a bit too high also. The finish in the bottom of the groove is very poor, so what I'm doing here is centre drilling the end, and I'm also drilling a hole down the middle of the fitting, but not all the way through. That will ensure that when I machine the other end, the hole is exactly in the centre. If I let this drill go all the way through, it may wander off centre. In this clip, I'm applying some lubricating oil to a centre in the tailstock. And once I continue turning the groove, it makes a funny noise. But once the tool starts to cut, the bottom of the groove is now very well finished. I want to cut two grooves in this pipe adapter. And once it's connected to the flexible gas pipe using a spring clip, it should be a perfect seal. That's the front part finished time to part it off. Once again unsupported the tool is making a chattering noise and as you can hear the noise stopped once I supported the other end with a centre. This small parting tool is digging slightly that's because there's far too much of it sticking out of the tool post and after all this is a very cheap aluminium tool post that actually does the job. I like the mechanism that holds the tool holder in place. It's very quick and simple to use and the operating mechanism is permanently connected to the tool holder so I can't lose it. 
In no time at all, the parting off is complete. I've turned the component around in the chuck because I need to work on this end. First of all, I'm facing across the front of it to remove the bit in the middle. I centre drilled the end first but forgot to press record and now I'm drilling all the way through. The twist drill will meet up with the existing hole that I drilled from the other end about halfway down. Now need to enlarge the hole part of the way in using a drill which is tapping size for quarter by 40 threads per inch. At this stage it's really important not to drill too far in. If I do that the hexagon part will fall off. How do I know how far to drill? I looked at the twist drill and I could see the reflection of the video lighting which was in just the right place. I could have used a felt tip pen. The next part of the operation is to thread the hole using a quarter by 40 tap. This is a taper tap. After using this tap first I then threaded it using a plug tap or bottoming tap. The final part of the job is to clean up the end to make sure that it isn't sharp because if it was sharp it could cut the gas pipe and I don't want that to happen. It may not look like it in this clip but this piece of wet or dry sandpaper is folded several times, it's not a single layer. Now the part is finished I can fit it to the gas jet pipe but first of all I'm tightening the existing nut that holds the gas jet pipe to the bracket that in turn mounts it to the baseboard. I've just applied some Loctite 542 to the thread because I do not want this to leak. And here I'm tightening the part that I've made into position using two spanners. After a quick clean up with a piece of Scotch Brite, here's the finished component. Making a second gas pipe fitting for the canister tap is identical to the one you've just seen. But this one is threaded quarter by 32 threads per inch. These sequences are running at 400%. This is just to speed up the job. I don't really need to narrate this part, it's identical in every way to what you've just seen. Although I didn't use the centre when I cut the grooves, I just ran the lathe a lot slower. And do bear in mind that the video is running at four times normal speed. Here is my box of a quarter by 32 taps and dies. And this clip shows the difference between a taper tap and a bottoming tap. The one on the left is tapered, the one on the right is parallel. It's a good idea to use a taper tap or at least a second tap rather than go straight in with a plug tap. I'm threading this component entirely by hand as you can clearly see from this clip. Here's the gas canister adapter. I applied some Loctite 542 to the thread. Here's a finished job with a piece of gas hose connected to my adapter which in turn is screwed very tightly into the canister adapter. Often I do use thick wall silicone rubber tubing for this job. But here I'm using proper flexible gas piping. With these strong spring clips at each end I really don't think these are going to leak. And that's it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.